My destiny was to entice a man to choose me as his plaything, to be a piece of flesh to bait a shark. Yes, I've chosen to set Ocean's Gift off the coast of Western Australia, known as the shark attack capital of the world. That means that where there's water, there will be sharks of all shapes and sizes. While he still slept, I carried him through the water to the island where his kind lived, yet in the deep water there were sharks attracted by the man's blood. MINE! Leaving him floating on the surface, I charged the sharks, shouting my claim to drive them off. It came to blows to drive the last one away before I could return for my human. Sharks feature throughout the Ocean's Gift series. They're ancient fish, their biology unchanged since their ancestors lived millions of years ago. They inspire fear, awe, and occasionally hunger. Sharks eat a lot of things, but sharks are on the menu for humans and mermaids too. We will fish for you tonight and tomorrow. I will see if I can find you a sweet little shark or a groper. I know you are partial to those. Belinda gives a description of some of the local species when she's swimming at the Abrolhos in Ocean's Gift. Sea lions slept on shore and sharks swam through the passage. Tiger sharks, a hammerhead, some smaller whalers and a wobbegong passed us, but none had the temerity to attempt a taste of us. I watched the sharks, wondering. What Belinda sees in the water at night is very different to what Joe sees on the surface later. The sea lions disappeared. One second they were there, then they were gone. The sun had set and it was starting to get dark, so I headed back to the boat. Hey, Vanessa! I called. The sea lions just vanished. Did you see where they went? She was standing at the filleting table at the side of the boat, a big industrial plastic apron tied over her bikini, cleaning her catch. She lifted the big filleting knife from the fish as she turned to me. All of a sudden... She ripped off the apron and leaped into the water, the filleting knife still in her hand. No, don't! I shouted as I saw the fin on top of the water right beneath her. I swam for the boat as fast as I could. When I reached the ladder I saw blood in the water but she was nowhere in sight. I couldn't see the shark either. The seagulls chose that moment to claim the fish she'd left on the filleting board, fighting over it on the deck. I scrambled up the ladder in record time, whacking at the gulls with my fins. They left the remains of the fish on the deck, but most of it was gone. I heard dolphin sounds and a splash, so I went to the side, but I couldn't see her or the source of the blood, just that there was a hell of a lot of it. Sharks swim into oceans infiltrated too, part of Layla's plan. I might try to lure him into the water for a swim with me, then drown him or call sharks to him if it were at night. For the sirens, sharks are a familiar method of execution, for humans who know too much. I left him bleeding in the water, my gift to the sharks, and in Vanessa's pledge. He will not betray our secret, for he will not betray me. If he even thinks to do so, I will call the sharks and watch them devour him alive. Yet sharks inspire solutions to other problems with humans too reminding Vanessa of the power of her siren song. Something bumped against me in the water. The bump was hard, but the object was soft. I ducked beneath the surface, searching. I was bumped again from the other side. This time I saw the small bull shark before he darted away in the murky water. There was a small group of them in the water, swimming around me. I was reminded of obnoxious human children crowding around the touch pool, killing the sea cucumbers with their lack of consideration. I itched to slap one of them. Perhaps all of them. One shark darted in closer, ready to bump me. This one is but a child, younger than the humans. He is no bigger than Marina, and he understands far less. He does not deserve violence, particularly where violence is not necessary. I raised my voice, not in anger, but in song. The little sharks approached me. I began to swim slowly so that they could keep up. They surrounded me like a school and swam with me. I changed direction without warning. Some of them stayed with me, whilst others overshot and swam hard to return to me. Once the school surrounded me, I continued, taking darting turns until they all learned to keep pace with me. For the first time in my life, I played with sharks. 
More surprising still, I enjoyed it. Welcome to my part of the world, Western Australia. We swim with sharks because they won't get out of the water for us. Thank you for reading Ocean's Gift and Ocean's Infiltrator. The Ocean's Gift series is a story like no other.